Okay, folks, you're live right now at the Sentinel Landing. There's Nick Petit, you can see out there. Coming down the trail right now, we're at mile marker 77. I'm your host, Kill Casey. Let us know who you're cheering for. There's Nick, there was a big moose out there. You can see some of the fans cheering him on right there as he comes in. This checkpoint will be a, uh, I'm not sure how long he's gonna stop here. Look at the sunset here. There's Nick Petit coming in, first team arriving. What's up? Yep, come on through. I got snow machines all around me right now. All right, there we go. Nick rolling in, Brendan Mackey right behind, it seems like. We'll know real soon here. I'm gonna get you a really good shot of this. Let's come around the trail here and get Nick. I'll get him the snow. You can about to see him come right around the bushes, folks. Stick with us here, share the feed. Here's Nick Petit coming in. There it is, first place team so far. Long way to go, but those dogs are looking real good. And there he is. Calling out hot to his dogs. They need to go a different direction. There they are, all the organizers, the vets. Okay, folks, you're just seeing it right now live. This is just sitting the landing. We're just west of the Parks Highway, about 12 miles north of our place, Alaska Dog Center. And there you go, Nick Petit's team in first. We'll go right around and get you a good look at him. They look like a happy team right there. <laughs> hey guys. This is the Copper Basin winning team. I'm not sure if all the dogs are the same, but uh, Katie could probably let us know. They're getting some traffic control here to get Nick. And this is what the checkpoint looks like. You're seeing the first team arrive. So you can see there's a wall tent there. There's Nick guiding his team in. Always a little stressful getting everybody in there. Okay. So what you're seeing is a parking job here. They're gonna go back in the back there and park the team. And he signed into the checkpoint here. There are, in fact, cookers, so they'll be coming around this way. This is the parking area. Ask any questions if you got them. There's a great audience that always gathers around this feed that can help you answer them. If I can't, there's Lance Mackey's wife running, getting ready. The other handlers, we'll go up to Katie. Nick's handler right now. I know she's excited because they're running in first place. There's the team coming around the bend. Excited to see the babies. <laughs> first checkpoint. I know a lot of folks have been watching the trackers at home. I included the link in the feed here. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, we're getting the team in right there. There they go, look at that. And now they're lining right in. These dogs have plenty of energy, so Nick still uses a snow hook. There you go, that's what it looks like. Big number 16, if you're watching the trackers, you've been seeing Nick out front. Those dogs look fantastic. They, they always do. He has his routine that he likes to do. So he's gonna go right into the routine. There we go. Okay, you can see some of the checkpoint. There's a warming tent right here. I was just kneeling in there. They're about to light the fire in there. This is the Susitna Landing. It's a boat launch for the Big Sioux River here. The Big Susitna River. That's how we get our borough name, Matanuska Susitna. So anybody who's been up here fighting fire or as a tourist, you know that Palmer is the home of state forestry down here. And it's in the Matsu Borough, Matanuska Susitna. So this river system here at sunset this is where the teams will be coming in next, is the Sioux River, the Big Sioux River. So you're right along the Parks Highway. <clears throat> you're right here with Nick Petit's team. He's already going right into feeding and getting them nutrition. There's Nick right there. We'll give you the uh, front row seat here. Brand new iPhone, brand new lens. Thanks for all the support earlier. I got some nice messages from Bonnie and some other folks who were saying it was great to be back together. We do this because we're a community. And the joy is in bringing all this to you, bringing these guys. Look at how frisky they are. Yeah. Was that fun? You got a nice... Uh, look at these guys. are. Uh, <laughs> they're ready for, for snuggle times. Look at that. Libby's already making her bed. She's like, hmm. Yeah, okay. And Katie's going to get the straw. 
Right on, Matthew Illingworth joining us from Southern Oregon. People joining from all around the world, you're live right now. So sit in the landing, mile 77 with your leader. So far, Copper Basin champion, Nick Petit. He's very routine oriented. So he's getting all the straw ready for his dogs to bed down on. Here you can see his handler, Katie, helping out. I know Tyler's watching. <clears throat> Ed Streeper says they look real good. You bet they do. They look frisky. They look happy. They're getting a stew and soup right away. Every musher has a little different routine, but Nick gets right to it. Yeah, and he's giving a little instruction. That's part of it here. Hey, there's Andy Pohl. I know he's getting ready for his wife, uh, Christy Barrington and Anna Barrington, to come in. And, and he's ready with his yaka on. That's Nick's sled. For those of you wondering what the gear looks like, Nick's got a nice light sled set up there. And then because he is already an Iditarod finisher, he, he can accept outside support. If you're qualifying for Iditarod, you have to do everything on your own. All the straw, all the bowls, all the feeding. Uh, but the veterans, uh, they, get to, <clears throat> they get to have help and have things prepared for them. So yeah. Nick's clearly put in his time in the past. And uh, he's allowed to accept outside help. There's your vet team right there checking out the dogs. What they're generally looking for is soreness or any kind of uh, presentation that gives them a concern. <laughs> There's our man. He's got fans from all over the world who always tune in. Good wood to know him. And so they have a little discussion there and they'll talk about uh, concerns for the dog. I'll give you a little look around the checkpoint. So at some point, there's going to be a lot more teams in here. There's 30 plus in the race. If you're following the track leaders at trackleaders.com, you know how many are still out there. Basically, everybody's out there. And they will all come through here and do this. That's why all the straw is there. That's why the checkpoint will be here all throughout the evening, as long as it takes. And then when the last team's through here, uh, they'll move and jump forward. There's Katie getting the, Hi, the getting the feed ready. Let's see what that looks delicious, mm. um, especially if you're a dog. Yeah, Meterade. <laughs> and so that's a slop type deal right there. It looks good. And then uh, Nick's going to get in that mode. We're going to back off and let his team have that quiet as they get in their zen mode here. We'll just give you a long shot so you can see the uh, the team. They'll start bedding down and getting the nutrition in. And uh, you know, a lot of mushers are all about conserving the energy of those dogs. They're conditioned to run a lot farther. And uh, it's all about getting good rest time, being really efficient, a lot of practicing. So more folks getting their gear ready. Look at all these fans. I know we got fans here. What are you guys rooting for? But, you know, go Matt Pavilio, right? Okay, Matt from Eagle River, right? Yeah, always got to plug your favorite Okay, we got, a, uh, we got a fan from Matt out there. That's cool. We got people, other uh, teams getting ready. So this is how everybody rolls. They're hauling in water and supplies and coolers. And if the mushers have already done the race in the past, they can accept all the help. And again, if they haven't, then they have to do everything themselves. Here's a vet check for you. <laughs> like... Uh, there's a, they'll check the heart, they'll check the lungs. These dogs are athletes and they get a once over. Oh, they're checking for any kind of irregularity or sensitivity. And we like to bring you right up to the front here. So you have a transparent look at what kind of support these dogs have. I'm looking for questions. There's Casey Thompson tuning in. Ryan Meager from New York State. Hello, welcome. Kathy's back with us here from Wisconsin. Kathy Stegan, great to have you. Tarn Bartlett's joining us and folks from all around the world are watching on the replay. Welcome to you. Your comments are going to be, be viewed by the mushers and their families. So just remember that you're not just interacting with me, which I love and which is why I'm here. And we're a, an active dog family that learns a lot together, but you're also interacting with the families and you're giving them something to look at and, and feel proud of when they look at their sons and daughters up here in Alaska working their butts off to get these teams ready and able to have fun out here because a well-conditioned team has fun at this. Uh, a team that's been having a hard time training or a hard time getting it together, uh, it can be hard. And uh, everybody wants it to be smooth for the dogs. 
Uh, let's see, we got Ryan Meager. First time helping to sponsor team. Right on. Let's hear more about that. Ryan, I want to know who you're sponsoring and how you're doing that. Uh, let us know. Sasha Pruitt saying thank you. We appreciate that. Connie Locke from Neosho, Missouri. Right on. The Show Me State. Welcome. Connie, great to have you here to sit in the landing. Uh, temperature right now is right around zero or below, Patty. Man, it's a great question. I usually try to let you know that. Um, I had myself uh, minus three this morning. And I just left the office, Alaska Dog Center, nonstop down there, mile 73. We're about mile 84 right here, and it's it was about uh, 10 degrees when I left, but it feels colder here. Uh, any read on the temperature there, David? No idea. No idea. How's your hands cold, feel? Cold enough to freeze my snot. Yeah, How's exactly. <laughs> okay. And David's one of our uh, checkpoint volunteers. He's with the Willow Dog Musters Association. I'm bare-handed, so it's not that cold. He's a neighbor. Well, I was noticing <laughs> my bare hand is... Uh, and then you'll be up here most of the night, David? Uh, probably all night, yeah. Okay, and that's uh, until every team's through, right? Yeah, yeah. And then cleaning up in the morning. And you're a musher, but you're also taking time to volunteer. Right, yeah. Yeah, we had set out to run this race, but uh, being our first year up here and Mother Nature tossed us some curves this year, we didn't have the miles for this, so, yeah, it's so yep. uh, you do the next best thing. Great, and I know there's a lot of fans out here uh, cheering all the volunteers on. And without you guys, this just doesn't happen. That's very true. And uh, very true. I appreciate about, it for sure. Breakers. All about all the, it. All the trail breakers, snow machines, the, the you know guys running the, the concession here. Uh, everybody has to step up. So thank you. We appreciate it, man. <laughs> Absolutely. That's David has to love everybody. He's up here as a musher, living right near us in Willow, and also uh, volunteering with the club. Katie and Nick talking some strategy right there. Sarah Hamilton saying great coverage. Thank you. We appreciate that. Wendy Borthwick from Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks for joining us from Hot Atlanta, Wendy. Uh, Stan Shaw asked how many miles from the start. We are at mile marker 77. It's a 300 mile event. There is 18 hours of mandatory rest, so it's not a sprint. Uh, of course, the teams like Nick that are totally professionals will have a lot more strategy than most teams who are just out to enjoy smooth runs. Uh, Matt Ellingworth, can they take the rest period on the trail or only at checkpoints? Matthew, great question. It has to be monitored. And so a team that signs in, um, and this is a preparation race for the Quest and Iditarod. So that's the same at Iditarod. If you stop out between trails, uh, you don't get credit for that rest. You have to sign in officially. And once you're signed in, uh, you'll get credit for that rest. So there is a strategy of... Uh, that makes it, Matthew, a lot harder to plan uh, how long you stay and when you leap and go in to get credit for it. Now, again, most teams will rest way more than 18 hours out here, and they're out to just have a good run. Uh, you can often hear that in the interviews, and we'll have some more of those soon. Okay, here's what it looks like. Another team coming in. So I'm, I'm assuming this is Brenda Mackey here. So for those of you who are Mackey fans, Will Rhodes, Brenda Mackey's team, I believe, is right there i'm zooming in with the brand new iphone really grateful for this lens i'm grateful for the at&t improved service that i have now just got this brand new one on monday and uh, i've been a little worried about wanting to make sure i gave you the best product i could even though i'm a volunteer um like a lot of you i want to do it right and uh now we got it right we got a brand new phone so you can see the team's gonna loop around there they are running on the big sioux river in the summertime, there'd be fishing boats and tourist boats coming up and down this thing. And right now, it's uh, it's dog teams. I'm giving you a bit of a strange angle now because I'm going to give you the really close shot as he comes around the corner or she comes around the corner. So uh, if you're wondering why I didn't run up to the edge there, I've got a strategy. And it involves this shot right here. So we're going to come around the corner here. And we're right on the trail. And this is how we, if you zoom back and replay, here we go. Mackie team coming in, looking really good. Trail side. There she is, Brenda Mackie looking fabulous, that beautiful smile. Will Rhodes, her husband's here helping out. There they are, they're gonna get checked in right now. So that's the process right there to get your rest started. Matthew, who asked earlier, Illingworth. That signature right there has a timestamp. And that starts the ball rolling on all those cumulative measures, right? There's the signature. And yeah, just all the way around the loop. 
And Will's over there somewhere. All right, lots of Mackie fans saying hello. They're going to go around just like Nick did. It's kind of like a traffic control area now. You've got these long teams, and they do stretch right out. If you haven't been on a dog team, that's a lot of distance up there. It's like a mid-sized school bus, if not a full-length bluebird school bus. So you have to navigate those teams through all sorts of challenges, including getting into the napping area, the feed and nap area. Tina chasing Kelly Rock. I'll put it right back to you. Thanks so much, Sasha, for being part of our educational audience there. Mom Marker 77. Renee Crawford is watching from over in Caswell. Good to have you, Renee. Good friends of ours helping us out. Building. Here we go. The team's coming in right now. That's Mackie right there. Coming in the park. So they've already signed into the checkpoint, and that counts as rest time beginning but they gotta get in position so you can fit dozens of teams in here. There'll be over 30 teams uh, eventually using this exact checkpoint and as dog teams go down the trail and use the other checkpoints, it's the same deal there. They just start filling in. You can see that uh, Will Rhodes has Brenda's cooker going. Uh, Brenda's an experienced musher. She doesn't have to be self-contained. She can have her partner make it smoother for her. I just got a text from Andy Pohl. There he is. My partner here. There we go. There's Will Rhodes. A lot of people know Will. Had a great run recently at the K. And he's doing the booties. We want to get the circulation flowing in those paws. The booties are on fairly tight. And that way you get, uh, you get that nice uh, protection. Um, Erica... Akir says, hey, from down the lake, or down the road in Big Lake, welcome, Erica. Kevin O'Brien, thanking us, we thank you right back. There's Brenda Mackey, if you have any questions for Brenda and Will, I'll try to pop them in later. Uh, there's Bette Gibson coming in from Indiana, cheering us on here. Yeah. There's those beautiful moments we love. These are all dogs that Will and Brenda have raised and some little pups up. So it's like having a whole bunch of your beautiful family members out there. And look at how, look at these leaders. They just, they're just gorgeous. I'll zoom in. They're just still looking straight ahead down the trail. They're staying lined out. They know that they have a job to do for now. They've, the leaders have to be the ones to hold the team in place, right? So that's a very wise dog that you trust to be out front because if they start wandering all around, the whole chain of dogs comes with them. There we go, some good back rubbing right there. Here we go, the tail wagging, shaking. And they're getting all the booties off first and then it looks like they'll get to the straw. Okay, another team in, here we go. Look at that, let's swing it around. So now we're gonna be showing you teams coming in and teams at the checkpoint. There we go, look at that, a little bit of a, see traffic control is important here. You gotta get these guys all dialed. So as we swing around, we have the new team in. We have Nick Petit right there working his dogs. We have Brenda Mackey and Will Rhodes working their dogs. First three teams are in. So you can tell how this place can get pretty busy pretty quickly here because you got a lot of moving parts. The volunteers have to stay on it. They can't be slacking at all. Uh, and they have to get back to their positions pretty quickly. So we do tip our hats to everybody who helps make this successful. I'm gonna keep my eye over my shoulder to see if there's another team coming. And then I'm gonna scroll up and look at some of your questions here. We got folks in Pennsylvania, Missouri, over the world, we got Atlanta. We have folks from Houston at 57 degrees, Lucy. Wow, Lucy, it's definitely right around zero here. My hands are frozen and uh, this phone will probably freeze here at some point in a little bit, about 20 or so minutes. So we'll get as much as we can for you here. Here's that new team coming in. And they are, for those of you who are tracking the bibs, please post uh, the for everybody who's watching at home, the order of the teams coming in uh, to help me out there. James, who we got here? 
Okay, Lance. That's right. Lance is in. Good. Okay, Lance Mackey, folks. The other Mackey. So we got Brenda Mackey and Will Rhodes. And then we have Lance Mackey and his wife, Jenny. There you go. So there's your top three right now. A lot of time for this race to unfold. Hi, babies. <laughs> yeah, get right in there. Get right in there. There they are. Looking real good. So if you're a Lance Mackey fan, you're watching this team right now. And of course, he's a veteran, so his wife can help him out. He's going to bring a snow hook down. And he's going to hook out the front of his team. Because Lance knows that he doesn't want them taking off and running down the trail there. <laughs> Learn a thing or two. There it goes. So he's got a snow hook in. All right. Right on, looking good. And Lance is going through his routine. Everybody's got a checkpoint routine. Hi, baby. Does that feel good? How are your endorphins feeling? Huh, pumpkin? How are your endorphins feeling? <laughs> are you feeling good? <laughs> oh, I know, I love you too. I love you too. And you're obviously a good dog. You're a darn good dog. Look at you. Let's see the world through your eyes. So here's uh, Lance's lead dog looking back at his team, and you're as if you're a lead dog right now. Looking back over all of his teammates. And yeah, and everybody's got their little routine. So you'll see some people run to grab the booties off, some people run to grab the straw, some people run to grab the water. But all those need to be done. There's no not doing it. So. It just, uh, as you become a musher and you get out and start camping with dogs, you develop your own, your own priority list and then change it around depending on the temperatures and the dog's needs. Should we get back to you? Because you're the handsome one. Should we get back to you? What do you want to say out of you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you love this dog, let's see some hearts up there. That is a handsome little beautiful baby. Right on. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get another little angle there on the world. James is helping out. James has been helping kind of all day. Different folks from Jim Lanier to other locals. Just running in circles. Running, <laughs> as he said, running in circles. He was vying with Didi Jamro for the Golden Rake at the Copper Basin. Yes, and she, hands down, she won it. She won it, right on. Um, okay, so let's, okay, there's Lance doing, you can always hear his voice out there. Let me go and see if there's any questions here as they, Lucy said frozen snot. Amber Cooper, thanking the volunteers. Thank you, Amber. Duly noted. They'll read this feed later, too. Just remember, everybody, <clears throat> whether you're live or on the rebroadcast, this is the only feed from this checkpoint in the entire world, and it's going to get out there, and people watch it, and they read your comments. So whether you're watching live or later, say hi to these dogs. Let us know where you're from, who you're cheering on. Yeah, what, what questions you might have. Oh, boy. That feel good. You like the attention. I do. Well, if I when I'm a dog, I do. When I'm when I'm with my Avic, he loves attention. Let's see. The, so we got all the hearts coming in right on. Lance will see that when he tunes in later. So you got Lance Mackey right there. Brenda Mackey right there, putting the straw down. So that's what Brenda's up to. She's in the straw phase. And then you have Nick. Petit over here, Girdwood to Gnome, and he's in the coats coming off, depending on the dog, eating, straw. Uh, they're, they're deeper in their process there. Looks more like a camp here. And each one of these hours uh, counts towards their 18 total mandatory, because they're checked in. You can see David Hasselov out there in the orange. He's the, one of the checkpoint volunteers. And he'll be watching this feed later, so whatever you say to the volunteers, yeah. they'll read, which is super cool. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, look at this. Is that, that's your little pumpkin? Yeah, that's the one of their... All right. Nance and Jetty's child out there helping out. He's helping put down the straw. <laughs> Get it right in here. 
All right, that's always good to see. And that shows a lot of the tone of the race. Oh, look at that. Very good at getting your own straw out in, eh? Gonna make the bed right away. Lance and his family showing that family's together. Go help daddy. <laughs> Everybody wants to see that. Come on up. <laughs> Lance making it rain, warmth and comfort. He wants those dogs to be on that straw, getting a good rest in. And uh, he had a good run out the K300. Worked it, made sure he came in Red Lantern. He wanted that. And here they are, a couple more dogs getting their beds and then they'll all just be all snuggled up. Okay, and his son's coming around to help. So you're watching Lance Mackey and his family putting out the straw from the comeback kennels. And then right behind him, Brenda Mackey and Will Rhodes. They got their booties and straw coming off. They got vets checking their team side by side here for the different Mackeys. And then over yonder, Nick and other mushers are getting other spots ready. So for example, if you're able to have support, you might have a support crew doing that. Getting your ice melted and the dog food prepared. Remember, if you're a qualifier and this is the way you're going to get to the Iditarod, then you have to do everything on your own. And that's what uh, is called no outside support. So uh, Lance, of course, four-time champion of the Iditarod. And Yukon Quest champion. He has his family helping him out. And it's a beautiful thing. Now those buoys will start coming off. And that gets that circulation flowing and gives those dogs a chance to know, okay, it's rest time, daddy's taking my booties off, that means we're resting. If it was gonna be a quick break, they might just keep on going. Okay, a lot of Lance Mackey fans out there, we, we always know that, it was good to see. Kathy Luke Vince said, we laptop mushers are appreciative, you bet. Stan Shaw, none of the teams have gone through yet, Stan. They're all resting right now. Good question, though. They've just done 77 miles. So in this, in this culture of dog mushing at this race, that's, that's enough for now. They're going to take a good rest. Uh, at other races, you know, you might push it more than that now and then, but that's not, that's not the strategy that's going to win here. This is a uh, break-it-down kind of race. Get your good runs in, get your good rests in. You know, the K300 you have to put on, the Cusco 300 you have to put on a longer first run and second run, and that's, you know, that's a whole different set of training and skills. So 77 miles here. Don Wilson watching from upstate New York, Syracuse area. Welcome all New Yorkers. <coughs> Stacy Johnson asks, is there a fee to get into the boat area? I just parked right outside of it in the public parking and ran on in to not miss anybody, so... I think there is a, a landing fee, though. Um, and hugs for the doggies. That's great. Desta Cooper watching from Carlton, Ohio. Welcome aboard. You are at the long and transparent checkpoint showing here. That's one of my contributions to the sled dog world is giving you long views. If you have questions or want to see what it's really like behind the scenes, uh, there's a lot of chores that need to be done for the dogs. They don't just come in like NASCAR teams and race right out of here. There's uh, a lot of maintenance, feeding, massage, love, uh, strategy conversations between each other. Uh, the handlers who are allowed to uh, participate, they can strategize what the next meal could be at the next checkpoint. All those type of things happen here. If you are watching right now, you've got Nick Petit right here, Girdwood to Gnome. He's uh, bending over right there is Nick and Katie, his handler. And then you have Brenda Mackey's team with Will Rhodes. They're right in here. And then you have Lance Mackey and his wife and son. And they are right here. So only three teams into the Susitna Landing checkpoint. That's the first checkpoint. Yeah, the dogs are getting their little cuddles and conversations. And I've already fallen in love with the... Get that lead dog right <laughs> that's the one we were seeing earlier what's that dog's name 
Rad? Yeah. <laughs> Rad is a very, very handsome, and he seems like he has a very good eye on the rest of his team. There's Rad right there, still, <laughs> still keeping an eye on his, on his crew here. Lead dogs are special dogs. <clears throat> they have a whole other set of tasks they got to do. Well, Carlton, Ohio, Portos, Por Portales, New Mexico, right on Toby <laughs> Zertuk Jr. joining us. Sharon Hayes watching everybody with the highs and shouts and loves. Thank you so much. And again on the replay, uh, which there'll be thousands of views on, your comments will come up, any new comments will come up, and the mushers will be able to relive all the love that you sent their team and or the volunteers. So it is a lasting archive of this race. It's not just a one-time deal. And everybody's joining us, like Ms. Chavez from Meadow Lakes, Alaska. Welcome. You're looking at Lance Mackey's team right here. Monica Fisher asking, when am I going to cover Minnesota? Yeah, that's a great question, Monica. Of course, I'd love an invite down. And uh, also, you know, I need to have the time. And, and life has been a little bit hectic lately in, in my family and my life. So we're, uh, we're just grateful to, to have the invite. Thank you so much. Hopefully, I'll be welcome down the road when I, when I have that ability. Uh, we did... We did train uh, in Superior last New Year's with uh, a sprint team, which was great. We went out to Tony's place. And there's Lance mixing up his chow for his dogs right there. Uh, talking to his uh, vet. He's checking in. There it is, Tina Chase saying Yahoo Lance right on. Hey, Erica Kerr from Savannah, Georgia, former Fairbanksian. Square banks, all right. We have a cabin up there cheering on Lance. Another Lance fan, so here's the, if you're a Lance fan, there is the legend right there. We're giving him a little room right now, so with the new iPhone, you're getting about a half zoom. And uh, he might even take that coat off and put a different park on, so give him a little space there to do what he needs to do. Wow, it looks like, uh, Brendan Mackey's team is deciding they've had enough rest already. Look at them. They are lined out. <laughs> Brenda, what's going on here? <laughs> Look at that. They're all wagging and like, Mommy, are we going yet? That's great. Great moment there. Great sign of good, happy dogs. Look at all the wagon. Of course, we're only 77 in, but Brenda and Will, they know what good, happy dogs look like, and that's what they're going to work towards all throughout the race. You know, coming in with a real tired, limping team, that's, that's uh, these days becoming a thing of the past. People want to see a good, healthy team come in. It's not about winning. It's about getting the most out of your dogs together where they're feeling it, where they know it, where they're conscious of, hey, we're doing this. And we're doing it together and we're having fun. And it shows. All of it shows. Okay, another team coming in. You got the whoop whoop from the crowd right there. Uh, I'm going to give you the trail shot right here. They're going to be coming in right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Is that, that looks like the Northern Whites right there. Jim Lanier. I wouldn't doubt that's Jim Lanier. <clears throat> Somebody checking the tracker. Please confirm. But that looks like a whole bunch of white dogs, doesn't it? Look at that. Coming in looking good. And I'd heard Jim was making a nice run when we were back at the office. Um, a lot of Jim Lanier fans out there. Bib number nine. And there he is, the legend. Signing in. There's that sign in. It's all important. Look at that. <laughs> Dog team looking real good. Jim, no stranger to this. Okay, he's getting himself good and checked in here. Here's the Northern Whites. Jim's going to grab a few supplies from his, his drop bags here. Vern Halter helping him out. The Northern Whites. Yeah, that's a beautiful string of dogs right there. Who's your guy? Who's with you? There's your wagon. Look at all those heads turned back looking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> there we go. Get them line back out. Okay. <clears throat> okay, bib number nine. Jimineer getting through the initial check, just last stages here. If for some reason the feed cuts right out, it's not because of cell service, it's because the battery will probably get cold here at some point. And so Jim's gonna go around. <laughs> James is gonna help him out right there. Oh, we got a hook down still. There we go. So this is part of the air traffic control. You got to get them all the way around. And these dogs want to pull. That's a lot of dog power right there. Jim sitting down, guiding his team around. What do you got, Nick? Bring it on. They look pretty pale. <laughs> okay, so that for everybody at home, Jim's dogs are called the Northern Whites. And Nick's silly joke is that they really look pretty pale, which is true. <laughs> There's a lot of dark dogs out here, so that's actually pretty funny. Um, here we go. I'll give you a quick 360. Again, there's your tent, warming tent, check-in area. Behind there is the concession area that's the actual landing parking and then of course the loop around and then the dog teams so Nick Petit right in here you can see uh, there's Jim coming around right there and then you can see how it's starting to lay out here and we'll try to see if we can get some strategy from some folks Margaret Ardell from our online audience saying, a little off from the coverage, right on, watching from Wheaton, Illinois. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois area. Uh, Margaret, I grew up, I was born at the Northwestern Hospital, and I'm honored to say that I spent until sixth grade on Lake Michigan and uh, swam at Nutria High School as a kid, training. My sisters went there, and then uh, we moved on to New England. My dad wanted to move out of the city and move us out to Western Massachusetts. And so we did that and I'll never forget my time in the Midwest. So good to have you here. Windy City Mushers are awesome. Rich Kisloff, our good friend and everybody's good friend. Right on. Kevin O'Brien says last year the dinner was warm. Cold, better, uh, cold weather is better. Yes, that's very true. And we snow machined last year all the way to Nome and it was darn warm. The river was very slushy. Uh, lots of mist and tough temps. The, the dogs uh, do appreciate uh, being able to run when it's cool. And they do, of course, better than when they're overheating. And then we have uh, Primaloft dog coats and other type things to keep them warm when they need it. Here's uh, Brenda and Will Roads for Brenda Mackey fans. Lucy saying, yeah, 10 degrees, uh, and even cooler. Uh, these dogs are working hard. Here's one of our vets. Oh my gosh, what's your name? Lauren. Lauren, where you hail from? New Jersey. What? Yep. Did you come all the way out? I did, I'm an ear of it down there. Came out. How about a high five for that? We've had a lot of comments for our volunteers and we want to make sure you know from our online audience. We have a big audience out there watching all around the awesome. world. Awesome. And they appreciate the volunteers like you absolutely i am very honored to be here you're on this is sitting the river the big yeah. sioux it's awesome and you know we call them boroughs here yeah. not counties so yeah. our borough here our county yeah. is called the matanuska sasitna borough I'm and that, the sasitna side is right here so you're on say. it that's awesome you're on the shores of the river it's that's beautiful. where the teams are coming off of yeah. and that's where that moose is cruising around earlier yeah. right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting a ton of hearts right now here let me show you keep those hearts coming i can show you look oh, at wow. that that's amazing. Oh my gosh, to all of our volunteers out there. Yeah. And how long are you here? Let's get a little I'll more. I've been here for the whole race. And, how, and who contacted you? How does that happen? Um, I'm associated with the Veterinary Tactical Group. So Jenna Speaker and Trinity Lar run that group. Okay, great, great, great. And they had told me about this opportunity. I brought some other vets that I work with at the yep. Animal Hospital. Oh, you did? Okay, great. Yep. And they're, they're going to be at the further uh, checkpoints, checking in. 
on the radical. As they come in. Yeah, so. And then you'll I'll leapfrog ahead, right after this one. What's that? You'll leapfrog and like yeah, out tomorrow. Yeah, I go up to Forks. Okay. Uh, after this. Okay. So that I can help out there too, because we got a big race crowd. Yeah, it's. What's it? Thirty-five people. It's a lot of teams, and will you sleep? Probably. <laughs> an okay. hour here and an hour there. Okay. Yeah, eventually sleep has to happen, but. Um, right on. Yeah, but uh, I'm here to make sure the dogs are safe for the race. Everybody's nice and healthy. And so you're checking lungs and yeah, heart checking rates. Checking lungs, making sure their wrists are staying limber. It's yep. really hard with the snow uh, pulling, pulling through there. So we're checking the wrists out, making sure everybody's uh, staying fit. And for the most part, they're looking really good coming in for the first group. So, yep. Yeah. And a lot of people know now this is not a sprint. This is a. It's, a, yeah. it's more of a marathon. Exactly. It's more of a strategy. Yep. So Healthier we're just dogs. To make sure. There's nothing on the horizon with these guys, but we don't really expect much right now in the way of issues. So. Yep, you always yep. hear Dallas say, if there's a 10% chance that a dog might not make it, he's probably going to leave that dog because right. he doesn't want to put the risk on the dog yep, yep. and on him. Exactly. So he'll leave that dog. So yep. that, that, that's how scrutinized these dogs are. Yep, we're, we're having some conversations. A couple of musters are considering whether they need to drop a dog or so. Um, preemptively make sure that the, that dog's going to be okay. And, exactly. Uh, not be too stressed by the race. So, yeah, the yep. whole goal of the race is to be proud of every dog out here. Exactly. Right? Make sure every dog is enjoying themselves and having a good run. And when that ends, it's time for that dog to get curled up in exactly. the dog. And then they heal super fast, yep. right? So there's exactly. a limp. I mean, I've seen it even with my own. I got yep. a 10-year-old and she, when she gets a little limp, boom, a day a later, time, she's good to go. A rest, just like with yep. us. You and some love it. and some cuddles yep. and... <laughs> We spoil ours. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right on. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll follow you as you cruise on Thank here because you. you're, look at that, we got stethoscope on there. We got lots of people throwing thumbs up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. <laughs> oh. Nick's trimming his mustache, everybody at home. Try to keep my nose on. That's the Copper Basin champion. That's how he does it. He waits. <laughs> you really are trimming it. Well, too busy training Hard to eat. Hard to eat. Oh, you can't look at I'm just making a hole. Look at that. <laughs> that is great. All right. <laughs> yeah, if you if you follow Gerber to Gnome, this is a classic moment where Nick is creating a hole in his beard mustache so he can <laughs> he can eat. <laughs> Right on, thanks for that. All right, we got lots of smiley faces and laugh faces coming up right now. That, that might be one of the, the funniest moments I've seen recently is the... <laughs> we do have fun at these races. We got, we got Vern coming in right now. I'll tell you what, his dogs look great. Let's go see. Amazing. That's nice to see, isn't it? He's been doing this a long time, right? Right. He's got a lot of miles underneath him. You know, these are, the dogs came up to Cusco, so right. Yeah, that's feeling, right. The feeling good. Wow. Right on. I'll follow you over there, and we'll go and see how they're doing here again. Everybody at home is uh, Will Rhodes and Brenda Mackey, and they're deep into feeding now. You can see them working closely together right there. They got bowls moving. Big, deep blue bowls, and of course, getting the calories in the dogs is really important. A lot of fat, a lot of protein, a lot of warm water, and probably some kibble in there, and it's probably some uh, beef, maybe some fish, and uh, some oils, depending on what their soup is, their stew. They could also have some, uh, some water events that happen later that are just more of a glycocharge type recharge type water, depending on what the strategy. Here's Lance Mackey's team right here. Again, our lead dog, Rad, just checking everybody out, keeping an eye on his crew. There he is, to the eyes of the lead dog. And then we got Jim Lanier, the famous Jim. For everybody watching in Kotzebue and Bethel, all those great times we've had singing, late night, Pete Kaiser and his dad and everybody, the Fairbanks family, Emery and Richie Deal, here he is. The greatest Iditarod singer who's still a musher. <laughs> who's still a musher. We don't want to take anything away from our hobo Jim, but Jim Lanier can sing a hell of a late night song at a party. And I've been there in the villages to experience that myself. A lot of head nodding over there. So here are the Northern Whites. 
Nick Petit's joke was, boy, they look awfully pale. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they do look good, and there's a lot of them here. So you've got the vet check going on. Uh, for those of you wondering the conditions, this is sunset here. Our days are getting longer. We're over seven hours now. You can see the moon up high. Beautiful night, cold night. There's some clouds in and over, so it's a little warmer than it has been. Clouds help us out here like they do a lot of places. We went from minus 30s for about two or three weeks to uh, about three to seven degrees above zero. And uh, every little bit of warmth uh, is good to a degree, but then like we've been having the conversation, you do not want it too warm. I think anything over 15 might be a little too much. So we're grateful for the cold. The dogs are grateful for the cold. We're grateful it's not copper basin cold. And our hats are off to everybody who did that. Because that was minus 60. That was really, really tough. Thanks for all the shout outs. We have more folks like Diana Johnson from Minnesota, Kathy Bailey from New York, Downstate, <clears throat> Becca Moore's watching. And if you're watching right now, live or on the rebroadcast, here's Jim Lanier, the legend. And he's uh, working his dog team number four into the Susitna Landing Checkpoint, day one. January 30th, 2020, and this is Thursday evening. We're now in the early evening. Uh, Linda Rockwell from Bingham, Binghamton. Binghamton, right on, okay. Excellent, Binghamton, <laughs> love it. Wayne Watts from Oklahoma checking out Jim Lanier. Look at the whites, are just barking at me. Give me a little bit of hell for chatting them up. That sometimes happens. And the, <coughs> there's Jim working all the booties. He's got his little uh, booty bucket with a, a liner so he can efficiently bring those home, drop them in the washing machine, and get them ready for the next time out. Booties are about a buck a piece. So you can start doing the math. You get 14 dogs, four booties a piece, a buck a pop. You get about 50 miles a run, maybe a little bit more. Oh, another team coming in. So. Team coming in. Another team right there coming in uh, right behind our vet check here. So there's your Lance Mackey doing his bit and Jim Lanier doing his bit. But then right behind them on the river is another team coming in. James, who's number five? Okay, James, one of the volunteers and a neighbor friend of ours running up. Go help out. Uh, Brenda and Will right there. And... The uh, temperature is definitely dropping, the light is dropping, and at some point my camera will probably just freeze up. But we'll go ahead and do what we can here for a while. There's a nice looking team. Look at that, woeing on in there. Beautiful rough. Hey! Okay. Look at that, we are getting checked in here. Right on. How is it out there? Good. They look nice. Thanks. There was a moose earlier, but I think the moose has moved on now, which is great. Look at these guys. Let's take a look at the... Great. Yeah. Hi. 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 You guys are cruising all around the place, aren't you? You guys are cruising all around the place. Look at that. Right on, so for everybody on your trackers, team number five is in. <coughs> All right, Rhonda joining us from Georgia. And Lori from Maine. All right, Anna Marie from Mount Baldy, California. Karen's hometown. Hi. Hey. Okay, pulling up the bib number 36 right here. There we are. So officially signed into the checkpoint, bib number 36. They're going to swing around and they're going to park right here with the other teams. So it's starting to fill up. Team number five in to sit in the landing. Nick Petit in first. Brenda Mackey in second. Lance Mackey in third. Jim Lanier in fourth. And remember, it was a mass start, so the clock started for everybody at the same time. There is no math. If you waited 10 or 15 minutes after the mass start to not get caught in traffic, it doesn't matter. The clock was ticking, and that was part of the strategy. So 
here we go. We'll check in with David. Looks like everything's going like clockwork here. You can see all the volunteers in their vests helping us out. Okay. There we go. Yeah, there's the team coming in right there and they're parking down much farther away down there, so they're going to start to spread them out a little bit. All right. Lucy, armchair musher. All right, you bet. Don Brown saying very nice from Florida. Kelly Jewell from Oregon. Right on cheering on Becky Hacker. We had a great barbecue with Becky the other day. That was super cool. Okay. Nancy Lang saying hello. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. We've got some Nick fans. Fan of the coverage. All right. So our plan is we'll keep this going while we can. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to head back to the house for a bit and take care of some things. Here's a team coming in, though. And then we'll restart this up tomorrow. See that team coming in off the Big Sioux River. Let me zoom in. The iPhone X is trying to pick that up out there in the cold. So there's your progression. The trail weaves across the frozen river. The teams come around and they come in, get signed in, and then they get parked. And they take some time off, do all the feeding, all the booties, all the vet checks. So this is a mandatory vet check here. Um, you can have it rushed if you wanted to move through, but it's not, not the race style here. Race style here is to get some good rest after 77 beautiful miles. There's that team right there. And then we'll come around. Oh, look at this. Cooker going. Katie's got that next set of... Whoop. <laughs> okay, here's our team, check-in team. And then we're about to get the dog team right here. I'm going to get you good footage of the dogs. Bam. Here we go. All right, check it out. Looking good. Team number 20. Sim Smith here. He's got 11 dogs there with him. Sim Smith in white. Look at that. Okay, getting signed in. There's the dog team. And you can see the routine. You got more folks filing in here to the checkpoint. It gets busier every minute as handlers prepare all the food, as they follow the trackers like you are at home. Trackleaders.com. So for Sim's wife and family, here he is. He's in. Let's pretend like we're on his sled right now. That's what he looks like heading through. He's gotten his check-in. James running ahead. Okay. So we got six teams in now, it just keeps going on. So these volunteers don't stop even when I do. I'm about to sign off here, folks. So let's see if you have any more questions. I'll turn around. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> the hands are starting to freeze here a little bit. Uh, Mary Ellen George says, watching the interaction between the mushers and their dogs is awesome. You bet, we enjoy that too. And uh, we're certainly here to bring you close up coverage. So tune in again tomorrow. Um, and all the mushers will read this, so every, uh, every comment, every heart, everything gets, gets redone in the replay. So Moses, Chris, give me another shout out. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that. Della and everybody, it's just great to have you on board. Mary Maxwell's back. It's great to see Emily this morning helping out. Uh, and it's great to be back with all you all. So I know it's been a while. We've had some life to live, uh, some love and some loss. So, uh. We are back, and uh, we got a couple races coming up. I'll also be doing the Ferrandi downtown Fairbanks, and boy, there's a lot of comments here. I'm scrolling down right now. This is so great. I can't even keep up with them all, and Tina says, good night from Michigan. I know it's three hours, two hours later out there. You guys are amazing, so thanks so much. I'm going to give you a, a look around here, and what we have, the community of Willow helping out. Other checkpoints ready. You can see it's truly is a revolving door of everybody helping out, and we'll see you soon.
Love you so much. Make sure to share this. I'll upload it to YouTube soon. Okay, love you guys.